Take one. Good day, folks. I'm Mick from Iron Fem. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Good day folks, I'm Mick Van Sale from Ironman 4x4. You should always fill your tyres with nitrogen gas. Your tyres will run cooler. You'll have better handling, better steering, better braking, better tyre life, better fuel economy. Your tyres won't oxidise due to the oxygen in the air. And last but not least, the nitrogen won't leak through the rubber of the tyres as oxygen does. These are the fantastical claims made by wheel and tyre shops that sell and advise you to use nitrogen gas in your tyres. So for my own benefit, I decided to go and have a look at the science behind this because as I said earlier, it sounds a bit fantastical to me and I don't really believe it. So I'll share with you some of the findings I came across. So let's first look at the temperature side of things. And bear in mind folks that normal air that we breathe and the air that you pump into your tyres at the fuel station already contains 79% nitrogen. And the nitrogen gas that they sell you at the wheel and tyre shops contains 95% nitrogen, not 100%. So that's an improvement of only around 16%. Let's look at the claims surrounding temperature and the fact that nitrogen supposedly runs cooler in your tires than normal air does. To do this, we need to look at the specific heat of the gases in question, air as opposed to nitrogen. Now folks, bear in mind that the specific heat really points to the amount of energy that you need to put into the gas to raise the temperature of that gas by one Kelvin or one degree Celsius at the same pressure. And it's measured in joule per gram Kelvin. That's just the unit that they use to measure that in. Now for air, normal air, the air that you pump your tires with at the fuel station, at 30 degrees Celsius, that specific heat is one joule per gram Kelvin. For nitrogen at the same temperature, it's only 1.04 joule per gram Kelvin. That's a difference of 4%. It's not very much. Now, to put it into a context when it comes to your tires, if you take a tire and you pump that tire up to two bar at 20 degrees Celsius, you then fit that tire to your vehicle and you go and drive your vehicle. What's gonna happen is that the temperature in the tire is gonna raise as the tread of the tire is moving around. And if we then record what the pressure is at a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, we will find that in this control tire, the pressure has gone from 2 bar to 2.36 bar, okay? When you do the same exercise with the nitrogen, pump it at 20 degrees C to 2 bar, fit it to the vehicle and go driving again, we want to raise that temperature up to a similar temperature to the tyre filled with air, but because of the 4% difference in the specific heat, we only need to go to 38.4 degrees Celsius. If we then take a pressure reading on the nitrogen tyre, it would be sitting at 2.35 bar as opposed to 2.36 bar in the tire filled with air. It's a negligible difference. You'll have more difference in pressure and temperature depending on what side of the vehicle the sun is shining as you're driving down the road. The next claim for using nitrogen has to do with oxidation. Oxidation comes from the reaction between oxygen and whatever surface it's in contact with. And the claim is that using nitrogen will prevent any oxidation on the inside of your tire. Now while this is true, it has a very little significant impact on you and your tires. The fact of the matter is that the outer surface of the tyre is in contact with oxygen all the time and all kinds of other stuff that are not great for the life of the tyre. And we really just don't see tyres falling apart due to oxidation all day long every day. It happens so slowly over such a long period of time that you'll be done with your tyres before it becomes a safety factor. And then there are all these claims about improved steering and grip and performance and tyre life. They're all a bit bogus. The fact of the matter is your tyre couldn't care less what gas is exerting pressure on the inner surface, whether it's oxygen, nitrogen, or mustard gas. As long as the gas is exerting the right pressure on the inner surface of the tire and keeping it in the right shape, all is good. But the prize for the most ridiculous claim has got to be the fact that nitrogen doesn't permeate through the rubber as easily as air does. So here's the thing. An oxygen molecule has a diameter of about 0.299 nanometers or in layman's terms, 0.299 billionths of a meter. It's very small indeed. A nitrogen molecule has a diameter of 0.305 nanometers or 0.305 billionths of a meter. They are both incredibly small. The Consumer Reports organization in the USA did just such an experiment in a laboratory. They pumped a tire up with air and checked how fast it was deflating over a period of time, one week, and they did the same experiment with nitrogen. 
What they found was that normal air leaked from the tire at a rate of 0.02 bar per week, as opposed to nitrogen, which only leaked 0.01 bar per week. But folks, 0.01 or 0.02, it's going to take you weeks before you notice any difference on your tire gauge. And folks, tire pressure is a safety critical practice. You should be checking your tire pressures at least every two weeks or every second fuel fill. Surveys have shown that people that run with nitrogen in their tires are not checking their tires as often as what they're supposed to. They live in this false sense of security that their tires are not leaking as fast, their tires are lasting longer, so they're not checking their tires as often as what they should. So folks, by all means, put nitrogen in your tires if you feel it's the right thing to do. But as the science would suggest, it's not all it's made out to be.